The reporting season is fast approaching for Nigerian banks and investors will be keen to see just how quickly banking services are being extended to Africa's most populous country. Investors will also be keeping a close eye on how the so-called second-tier banks are performing relative to the larger ones. Tabo Ngalo, Joint Manager of the Stanlib Africa Equity Fund, joins us in studio to share his views. Thanks so much for your time. Good, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, yeah, good evening to all the viewers at home. Thank you. Well, let's look at your geographical weightings here. We've got some interesting plays, Nigeria being your biggest exposure, mm -hmm. followed closely by Egypt. Talk us through those two territories and why they're the hottest spots for you. Yeah, you I mean, we've, we've always believed in the, in the Nigerian story. I think the Nigerian uh, altogether, we call it the Nigerian investment story as a whole, I think is, is quite solid. Uh, I mean, if you look at Nigeria, it has been quoted uh, uh, by The Economist. There's actually a, re a recent piece that came out by The Economist Intelligent Unit, uh, which put Nigeria as one of the top three, uh, you know, the top five, actually. It came out as number three of, of the, the fastest growing economies in the world. So when you look at from a macro perspective, Nigeria is, is is quite sound and we believe in the story in Nigeria. Um, Egypt uh, obviously has gone through quite a, you know, a, 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 a sort of a, a, a terrible period, as we all know, in terms of just the, you know, the revolution, and I think where, where, where it's going now in terms of just trying to settle down from uh, from some of the demands that are coming from the revolution. So you, we've got a situation, I think, where we favor some of the positive issues that are coming out of Nigeria. Uh, at the moment, if you look at the position in, in Egypt, actually, we've been reducing Egypt uh, for quite a while. Uh, if you compare the, the you know, the, the current figures in, 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 in Egypt and, and where, where we, we were, yeah, and where we're currently going, we're looking to sort of reduce our, 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 our position in Egypt. But I mean, I think we still remain quite po positive, as I say, in, uh, like on the Nigerian banking story, on the Nigerian sort of story as a whole. It's already been broken up. You know, obviously there's a, there's a great amount of interest in Nigeria because of obviously the, the massive population, but sure. because the, the banking services have, uh, penetration is still so low. So when you think about uh, the different types of banks in Nigeria, we alluded to the second tier banks there. Do you own any of those uh, at the moment? Yeah, I mean, we hold a, a broad range of, of banks in Nigeria, uh, but we tend to favor more the tier one banks, the larger banks, uh, and primarily because the tier one banks can participate uh, more in the economy than the, the second tier banks. You know, uh, whereas if, you, I mean, as I mentioned, you know, we're talking about a Nigerian growth story, and you find that a lot of the banks that can finance some of the larger oil and gas uh, deals or some of the larger power projects are banks that have a larger balance sheet. Uh, so you, you you know you tend to find that the syndicates in in some of these larger projects uh, tend to go towards the you know the larger banks in Nigeria, uh, meaning you know the likes of First Bank, GT Bank, Access Bank, uh, Zenith Bank. You know, I think some some of these banks are, are, have, have demonstrated even if you look at the the spread of that demo the, the, the balance sheet that you know they they can play in that larger space quite a lot. I mean most of these larger banks I mentioned are the ones that are that are, are banking the likes of MTN uh, and some of the larger uh, telco uh, and services companies in Nigeria. So, I mean, I think from, from, uh, from, from where we sit, uh, we tend to favor the, the, the tier one banks, uh, but we still have an exposure to, to, the, to the tier two banks. I think from a valuation perspective, it's important that someone be uh, quite selective uh, in terms of what's happening with the tier twos, but, but there are good tier two banks. I mean, we favor names like FCMB, uh, Diamond Bank as well. I think they're, they're, they're good uh, uh, prospects coming out of that Tabi, name. Yeah. your biggest play across the board is the consumer. Sure. on the African continent. Sure. And that's obviously capitalizing on the number of people in Nigeria. Yeah, Just in terms of the consumer story, I see you sepa separate out your financial exposure. Tell me what you are investing in that is directly exposed to this consumer. Well, I mean, from as, as you mentioned, one of our top holding is uh, it would be Nigerian uh, breweries in in Nigeria, and and this is a subsidiary of of, uh, of Heineken. Uh, you know, as 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 we, as we all know. So, I mean, it's uh, it, it Nigerian breweries. I think you know plays in that uh, a consumer population growth story as, as it were. You know, the second one is, is another one that, that we like is Nestle. Uh, another one is UAC. UAC, as you might know, is, uh, is, is, another, is a company that, 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 that was bought over by, uh, or, or part of it was, uh, was bought over by, by Tiger Brands of South Africa. So you, I think you've got quite a strong backing coming from, uh, from those names. But if you look at, for instance, I mean, the three names I mentioned from uh, Nigerian breweries, Nestle and, and UAC, you know, these are solid companies that are well run. I mean, if you, if you look at names like Nigerian breweries, 
Blueberries and, and Nestle, you know, these are companies that have international uh, parents. You know, so the corporate governance is, 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 is quite strong. And, and, and these companies have demonstrated over the years that they can grow uh, quite steadily. You know, uh, most of these, these consumer names uh, tend to give you uh, bottom line growth, earnings growth of, of about 20% on average year on year. And that, that, that tends Warren, to happen it's throughout clearly a the, the big cycle. It's a big story on the, on the African sure. continent is, is playing the consumer. Uh, how many people are we sitting with in Nigeria at the moment? I mean, 160 about 160, million? yeah. 160 million sure. people. Yeah, you you can't negate that opportunity. Absolutely not. And yeah. talking about governance, Taba, I just wanted to come to obviously something that's uh, very relevant for you. you. You're going off to Nairobi uh, later on today. Um, what is the feeling around the elections now that we've, we've got the result and, and there's actually the inauguration happening as we speak? You know, I think we, a lot of people were, you know, the biggest fear was that, you know, we were going to have uh, the sort of elections we saw back in 2008. You know, I mean, I think the whole world was guiding against, uh, you know, political violence, especially uh, electoral violence and all these other issues. So what, what came out of the, this year's elections was actually a peaceful, a more peaceful election, uh, a more peaceful transition. Obviously, we had the court case and all, but I think all of these challenges came uh, without much violence and without much uh, instability in the country. So I think all of us are, are quite positive. Uh, I mean, we were quite fortunate uh, in that we took a, a, a quite positive position on Kenya, and we avoided our, our position in Kenya over the last quarter. Over the last quarter, and and that's quite paid, paid off quite a lot because I think our view and, and our view still is that um, uh, Kenya will, will will continue to be stable and will be more, uh, you know, will continue to grow as as the whole East African uh, economy grows. And and as you know, Kenya is the hub of, of that entire region, so it remains uh, strategically important, you know. And even though you might have some sort of uh, political uh, political challenges with with uh, obviously the, pre the president facing some challenges at The Hague and what have you, we think uh, the world will still look at Kenya as the leader in, in, in East Africa. And, and, and I think with, with the elections behind us now, you know, we're quite positive as to, you know, the companies can now settle down. We can get positive issues on, on, on issues like CapEx, uh, on, on what uh, management are, pl are planning because the, the, whole, yeah. the whole economy came to a halt, didn't it, That's over it. this election period? Exactly, yeah. So, so, I mean, of course, you know, that, that halted management decisions, as I mentioned. So, you know, it was a, a, a case of we, we needed at least some sort of resolution. Uh, whether it went to, to Huru Kenyatta or it went to, to Ray Lodinga, it didn't really matter. It was a question, I guess, of uh, uh, has there been a free and fair election? Uh, are, are there, is the will of the people expressed in, 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 in the result? And, and I guess the court upheld it. Just it can I jump in quickly? Yes, okay. Zimbabwe. <laughs> I see you've, you, you're quite aggressive on Zimbabwe as well. So you yeah. are one of those that sit on the side of the fence that says that this country is going to come to fruition. Can I use that terminology? We, we, positive on, we are positive on Zimbabwe. Uh, I think we, we're positive but cautious. I think we, we've all learned, uh, you know, looking at, at Zimbabwe over the last couple of years, that a, a lot can happen to derail uh, the process, you know. But what we've seen with the successful referendum over the last uh, uh, month or so, you know, I think that's helped uh, quite a lot in giving investors confidence. I think we also saw even the European Union lifting some sanctions uh, uh, post the, the referendum. So I think that, that some messages that have been coming from Zimbabwe over the last two years particularly. And uh, we're not sure, I mean, wh wh where sort of the, um, uh, the, the the wake up, I guess, as where from politicians came from, but 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 for, from from us, from what we're seeing uh, across Zimbabwe is that um, the politicians are also starting to realize that we need some resolution uh, in, in in this entire issue. I think we're going to into election uh, later on. Uh, I mean, we we, we, we understand from from uh, the prime minister that they they're looking for elections in September this year. So I think what we want out of Zimbabwe is 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 some sort of resolution in, in politics. And once we have that, I think the Zimbabwean investment story just sort of speaks for itself. In terms of uh, some of the opportunities that are available out there. So, so is a Zimbabwe turnaround story for you at this point? It's, is it? Is it? Or is it's, it, it's getting there. It's, it's, quite it's there. a turnaround story, but it's also done very well. I mean, if you look at the market in Zimbabwe, uh, the, 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 you know the, the stock market in Zimbabwe has, has, has rallied quite a lot over the last year. Uh, I mean, you, you look at yeah, uh, uh, for this first quarter. I mean, the market is up uh, over twenty percent in U.S. dollars. So a lot of it is already obviously been priced in. Obviously, managers such as ourselves have been uh, sort of taking positions on, and some have taken positions before. Uh, and, 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 you know, it, it, it's a question, I guess, of we're all expecting quite positive results in Zimbabwe. Uh, and, and we think it is a turnaround story of note, you know. I think it's uh, uh, the opportunities in Zimbabwe, we all know, especially if you, are, if you are based in South Africa or you're looking at Zimbabwe from a South African perspective in terms of what South African companies can do uh, to go and invest in Zimbabwe. Tabo, just a, another question. So besides Nigeria, Egypt, Kenya, Zimbabwe, 
where would you place money? Are you looking at other territories or are you going to isolate your portfolio to these countries at this stage? We, I mean, we're still positive on the three. Uh, we, we think Egypt at some point will, will turn around. I think uh, when you look at Egypt, uh, again, Egypt is a strategically important country uh, for, for the world and I think for, for the but region no, as a whole. But no new countries on the agenda yet? Uh, I mean, on, on, on new countries, you'd have to look at markets like Rwanda. I think Rwanda is also quite a, is, is, is a positive uh, story. But I think with Rwanda, most uh, asset managers have still have challenges around custody and, and, and some sort of setup because it's a relatively new market and it's still quite small. Uh, but I think Uganda is still quite positive. Mauritius is also a turnaround story. Uh, and Mauritius will be a question, I guess, of what happens to Europe and what happens to the global uh, story. So, so in other words, watch this space. We could see some more opportunities unfolding. There could be a lot more coming. There will be definitely a lot more Unfortunately, coming. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thanks so much. Tabo Nalo, co-manager of Stanlib Africa Equity Finance.